James Paul Freund was born on the 16th of September, 1946, to Adam Wendell and Freund and Loletta Grace Brandenburg. His father, a native of Pennsylvania, was descended from recent German and Irish immigrants to the United States, as well as colonial era settlers who'd called the state home for hundreds of years. James's mother, however, was from Ohio, and her family had lived there for centuries, but her maiden name hints at German heritage too. James was originally from Massachusetts, having been born in the small city of Fitchburg, and lived in the nearby city of Lemonster for several years before the family moved back to his father's home state. Although Adam Freund was from Lebanon, his family decided to settle in Lancaster, 25 miles south of his hometown. James attended J.P. McCaskey High School here, where he was a member of the school baseball team, as well as its English, football and pinochle clubs, among others. But it looks like James found more than just an education at J.P. McCaskey High, as in 1965, the year after he graduated, he married his high school sweetheart at the Covenant United Methodist Church in Lancaster, later going on to have a daughter with her. James didn't stick around in Lancaster for long though, as despite having previously wanted a career as an accountant, he instead joined the US Army immediately after leaving high school. In 1965, he was dispatched to an army base in Germany, so he was thousands of miles from home when tragedy struck his family the next year. The tragedy in question was the death of James's father, who died at the age of just 49 from a heart attack after falling ill at work. James was just 20 years old when his father passed away, and losing him so unexpectedly must have had a profound impact on such a young man. In the years that followed, James returned to his family in the United States, but by the early 1970s it appears that his marriage had broken down, as in 1974 he was charged with non-support of a child born out of wedlock. The charges were dropped after James decided to pay up, but it seems that he had little involvement in his second child's life, whose mother was not the woman he'd married in 1965. The last time James's family heard from him was Christmas Day 1975, after which he was reported missing. For over 40 years, they had no idea that he had acquired a new moniker, Sumter Jock Doe, that he was buried in a cemetery in rural South Carolina, thousands of miles away from the family trying to come to terms with his disappearance. Of course, with hindsight, there were a number of clues linking the unknown murder victim to the man who'd vanished from the Midwest. The most obvious example is the ring the victim was found wearing, engraved with the initials JPF, which we now know stood for James Paul Freund. But a subtler clue was the expensive Belova watch that he was wearing when he died, which helped fuel theories that Sumter Jock Doe came from an affluent background, possibly being a wealthy European traveller or the son of a Canadian doctor. In reality, James's father-in-law worked for Belova and its predecessor for 44 years, and as that particular watch was manufactured in 1968, it seems that he gave it to James as a present at some point after his return from Germany. These clues would hopefully lead to the speedy identification of a John or Jane Doe nowadays, but this was evidently not the case in 1976. However, despite not knowing what had happened to him, it seems that James's family came to believe that he had passed away, and in 1985 an attempt was made to have James declared legally dead. Although this seems to have failed, a follow-up attempt was made in 1988 by his ex-wife, and this seems to have succeeded, as in the US Social Security Death Index, James was listed as having died in January 1983, in line with the long-standing practice of people being declared dead seven years after their disappearance. Sadly, James's mother never found out what happened to her son, as she passed away in 2004 in Mason, Ohio, at the age of 77. Another 17 years were still to go by before his family, and the world, found out that Sumter Jock Doe was in fact James Freund, the victim of a callous murder which remains unsolved to this day. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I'll be uploading plenty more videos about mysteries solved using forensic genealogy in the future, starting with a video next week on some of the cases solved using forensic genealogy in 2020. If you're interested, then feel free to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and watch this space. If you haven't already seen the video on Sumter Jane Doe, aka Pamela Buckley, then there's a link to it in the description, with this video containing much more background information about the case. After 45 years without their names, Let's hope that both can finally rest in peace, and that it won't be long before their killer is identified.